focus on behavior, focus on mindset. And in fact, to be a little bit clearer, focus on your underlying deep rooted belief systems. Yes. So from a psychology more. point of view, um, there's, a, there's a very simple linkage. The belief you hold will cause you to behave in the way you behave. And the way you behave will cause you to be the success that you either are or are not. Mm -hmm. So if you want transformation, then you've got to focus on really what goes on inside. What's going on in your head? How are you coping? What is it that one person does on a cold, icy morning that somebody else doesn't do? Um, what's the catalyst that causes them to behave in the way that makes them distinctive, noticeably different, more successful? So, so I'll give you a really, you know, I'll give you a real example. Um, okay, I'm going to go back in time, and it's a, it's a proud moment for the Brits when Roger Bannister was the first person ever to run the four minute mile. Okay. Um, that's historic, not desperately mm -hmm. interesting. What's a little bit more interesting is how many people ran it the year after. Now the records are not that accurate, but it's between five and 10. Yep. Um, what's more interesting is why did they not run it the year before? Because, um, you know, nothing changed in terms of training techniques, nothing changed in terms of diet, nothing changed in terms of equipment. But the year before, those runners sat on their sofa at home um, saying to their families that nobody will ever run a four minute mile, their belief. Therefore, their behavior yep. was I sit on my sofa and I watch you know, Netflix. A year later, they sat on that same sofa, said to their family, some guys just run a four minute mile, I better up my game. Mm -hmm. um, and run a four minute mile. So it's a very small isolated example of how if you can recalibrate how you think, then it will it will change your behavior. Not like a flick of a switch. Sometimes the behavior will take some some weeks, months and years to hold, mm -hmm. but eventually you will get there. I think it was um, Ford once said, if you believe you can or can't, you'll be correct. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that one very well. And it yeah. is, and it is the internal dialogue that we do say to ourselves. And because of our flight, flight or freeze mechanism that we've been programmed to actually have hunters and gatherers and all of that, and you're probably well versed on that. A lot of the stuff is there to protect us. So a lot yeah. of the language that we use is most likely more negative because it's saying, I need to protect myself. I need to do this. Yeah, but, look, look, you know, you know, you're right on the money. I, I, you know, I'll give you another example. It's just, it's a story out of school, but it's a very true mm -hmm. one. At the beginning of the pandemic, in fact, just before the pandemic, I facilitated a conference with circa 100 people in the audience, uh, happened to be in London. Um, and almost in my opening remarks, and I was uh, mic'd up, it was a great environment. And my question to the audience was, who is the best salesperson in this room? Now, if that were in New York, there would be 15 or 20 hands going in the air yeah, because yeah, it happened cool. to be in the UK. Nobody put their hand in the air. So I had to look at one of the bosses and the bosses points me at a guy in the corner and I walk over to the guy in the corner and um, I look at him in the eyes and I say, um, I say, how many of the other 99 people in this room have banged on your door in the last 12 months to buy you a coffee to find out how you became the number one salesperson. Now, I could guess what the answer was going to be. So the initial yeah. answer was silence. And the reason it was silence is his brain was going, I don't want to embarrass all of my 